so guys what we're going to start with for this shelf jacket you leave um a distance before starting your basic body pattern if you don't know how to draft a basic body pattern i have a video on my channel you check it out and then watch that before you come over here so now this space that i left here i left five inches this is five inches you can leave four you can leave four and a half five and thereabout depends on you now this is everything about a basic bodice pattern let me roll it out so you can see what i'm talking about this is just a normal basic bodice pattern this is a normal basic pattern we have the bust the waist and the hip here we do not need the under bust because we don't need that shape then you go ahead to add whatever allowance that you want to add but before we go into the allowance let's take our dart let's do the dart measurement so you take the person's nipple to nipple measurement divided by 2 which is 4.5 and then from the waist I'll be going up by 5 inches 5 inches and then I'll also be coming down by five inches. Then I'll be taking um, one inch that, one inch that should be okay. Or let's take um, one and a half inch that. So which means we'll be having 0 0.75 here and um, 0 0.75. So together it will give us 1.5 inches. So this is going to be our dart intake. You can decide to roll it straight now. So this is our dart. Now, if you are confused about anything here, go back to my video on where I did my um, my basic body pattern. This is for the back. This is for the front. This is for the front. This is for the back. Now, the width I'm using here is 3.5 inches. Why the depth is 3 inches? And remember to keep your four to five inches allowance in front. Now for the front part, to get that curve on the front part, what we're going to do is, this our three inches, you take it here first. So this is the three inches, the three inches here. You can decide to rule a line. So you be sure you have a straight line. This is your three inches. So now we'll come down by one inch. We'll come down by one inch to be able to get that sort of curve in front of the jacket. So you connect it. Let me connect with a straight line because it's kind of straight. So you connect it and blend it make sure it's well blended so this will be that extension for the front um, part you understand as you go forward the next thing to do is to add our allowances so you can now add your allowance so for here it's just your normal allowance, whatever amount of allowance you want to use. So here, don't forget to pull back this allowance. So I'm putting it back 2 inches, 1.5. I'm putting it back. And then for this part as well, put your 2 inches allowance. So you can decide to roll this one first. That's your normal allowance. And then 
the that allowance you connect it as well connect your that allowance So this is for the dart allowance. This is your same allowance. So for the back, I'm going to fold in the allowance for the front. This is very very similar to a normal shirt. What you're seeing me do here is just um, transferring my dart. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to transfer the dart from my pattern paper to my fabric this is the easiest way to transfer your dart you just put your pins where your dart legs meet and then you mark little little dots so it will be easy for you to connect them you do that on both sides so your dart will be the same at the end of the day i didn't use this dart this is for the sole purpose of tutorial so that you would know every step that it takes to get this done but i didn't end up using the dart and if you want to do that, you can also do that yourself. Now, after transferring my dart on that back um, pattern, I'm going to increase the dart leg because the back dart is supposed to be higher than the front dart. So I'm going to increase that back dart by about two inches upwards. So I'm going to take two inches upwards on both sides. So this is for the purpose of those who want to use that and that is that about the dart mm -hmm. um the next thing is to start with the front pattern and here i'll go ahead and cut out the front neckline the front arm hole, and then cut it out on my fabric exactly what i have on paper all these parts they are easy and simple to follow just like um the basic bodies pattern that is why if you've not seen how to make a basic bodies you can go and check it out the only thing i did differently from the paper is i increased the length because i wanted it longer now you see i cut everything exact and then i put half an inch allowance on the shoulder for joining and i did that also for the back yeah i'm just marking the front and the back of my fabric you know this is why so not to get confused now after doing that i'm transferring my dart once again in case you missed that um in the first um part of the video after doing that i'm going to um notch my allowance you remember that five inch um, extension i'm going to notch it on the upper part and the lower part so that i'll know where it is because it's going to be very very useful trust me on that now look at the front pattern and the back pattern they are all done and ready for us to work with you can see how easy this thing is if you just know the techniques to follow then it's very very easy to pick piece of cake now when you see me um joining together this is how your um chef jacket is supposed to look like you can see that you already have the shape from the neckline it already looks like a chef jacket now for the sleeve i'm not going to go into details of how to make this sleeve this is a basic sleeve and i have a tutorial on my channel you can go check that out if you don't know how to make a basic sleeve if you do let's go along with this video so i'm just extending the um, length of my sleeve because i want it longer and then um after extending the length i'll go ahead and cut exactly what i have on my pattern and our sleeve is ready to work with you can see it this is how it's looking like front and back now you cut the same thing you cut for your front and back piece on your lining simple as that easy peasy yeah i'm trying to mark out where i'll put my front pocket now i made a mistake on my front pocket but i'll be letting you know the mistake i made as we continue so from the bottom of my um dress i'm coming up with um 10 inches you can do more if you want depends on where you want your pockets to sit but 10 inches is just fine so i decided okay why not open it up so it will be easy and now this opening up was supposed to make me see the mistake that i made but i didn't see it on time and when i saw it i had already gone too far to go back because i had already made a cut and if i take it out it will make 
uh, my work rough. So now you see where these clothes overlap. That is where your um, your um, pocket is supposed to start from. That is after the five inch on both sides where they overlap. You can see it on the camera. It's showing clearly on the camera. You see where I'm putting this upper one. That's the wrong place. Like the position, not the length of that, not that 10 inches. The position where I'm putting it. What I did here is just taking the 5 inches. But I was supposed to take 10 inches because I'm supposed to come after that second overlap there in the video. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying, but I hope we are. So... You get a bias tape. I use the bias for mine. You can use a crepe fabric. You can use whatever you have at hand, whatever um, the color you're going with, the whatever fabric you have on ground, you can use that. But I went with a bias instead because it's easy to work with. Now I'm cutting my bias five inch each, and I'll be cutting four pieces of each of the bias. At this point, guys, if you're not if you're not subscribed to my channel, you are wrong. Okay, you're not wrong. Please subscribe to my channel. It will really help this channel to grow and it will help um yeah, it will help the channel to grow. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to share with your friends. Turn off your post notifications so that you get notified whenever I post any new video. All right, let's get back to our tutorial. Yeah, I'm just cutting out um the pieces that I need for my pocket. Now, after cutting, you see where I said it was a mistake to put it. It's a very big mistake to put it here. The second one was correct, but this um, first one was wrong. And thank God it was for my sister. So if it was for a client, I have to start over. That is, I'll have to start this other part all over again. Because the time I noticed it, it was too late. If it was now, I noticed it very easy to start over but i didn't notice it now until it was too late and i think probably it was because i was working at night i was feeling sleepy guys you cannot cheat nature that's what i've discovered so let's just continue with our tutorial now you go ahead and pin down your bars you open your bars those folding on your bars you open them up and then you fold into two only you know it has two folding you open that folding up and you fold into two and then you place it downwards and pin after doing that i'm i'm just measuring to be sure now after measuring i'm going to mark out half an inch on both sides half half inch on both sides because i'll be sewing up to that half half inch you can do three quarter that's 0 0.75 and you can still do the half an inch is fine so I zoomed in so that we can see properly. You can see after sewing up to that half inch on both sides, I didn't sew half, um, outside the half inch. So that's what you want to do. This is a welt pocket or a full welt pocket. So if you want me to do a detailed tutorial on how to do a full welt or a proper welt pocket, and this is double full welt. If you want me to do a proper um, video on how to do this, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be waiting for your comment. Now you do the same thing for the lower part. You remember this is double weld. There is single weld, but this is double weld. And then you go ahead to sew the same way. How you know you're correct from the back part, you see that your lines align. Make sure your lines align, please. Now, after doing that, we need to snip. Like we need to slice it open. But now, when you're slicing it open, here, why I folded it like this, so that I can give it a notch, so I can get a straight line. Please don't cut it continuously like that, you miss it. Now, after um, putting the notch, I'm going to cut a straight line, and I would not get to that place where I finished sewing. I will stop about half an inch before there. Remember, we didn't sew to the end of the fabric. But still on that, we'll stop half an inch before you get to where you stopped sewing. If I'm not making sense, please look at the camera, look at the video and see what I am doing. It will make sense to you. And try this out before you complain that it does not work or you don't know how to do it or you cannot follow it. Trust me, if you follow what I did here, it will be a piece of cake for you once you practice it. Don't try to understand it in your head. Practice it. All right. You do the same on both sides. You see, you cut like a V-like shape. 
like a v-shape or an angle towards the end towards that half an inch now after doing that i want to um make sure it relaxes well before flipping those legs those wings that we have let me call them wings on the side remember we didn't sew to the end so you have an extra wing which you have to take to the back of the fabric so now i'm just going to use my iron to press it down please when you're making any real pocket i don't advise you do it blind that is you do it without um a steamer or a pressing iron always use a pressing iron and even if you have a clapper use it to press it down because you need your welt pocket to sit properly for it to look nice you can see it on your jacket your suit how they look peng so if you want that result you have to have a iron a pressing iron or a steamer i hope i've made myself clear now you can see me going back in again and again to iron it and i'm using a clapper to press it down Hmm. Okay. After doing that, now this is our tail or ear. Let me call it ear, not tail anymore. This is our ear. You push it inside. You push it inside to the back. You can see me carefully pushing it inside to the back. Now you see what um what we're going to do at the back of um the jacket. Now after pushing the ears inside, remember after cutting you have another ear from the white that is from the main bodies i will zoom in close so you would see it that is where you will stitch down together with your ears from the front you can see it you stitch down there like i said earlier don't try to understand it with your head please try to practice it and then you'll get it i promise you that let me know in the comment section what you feel about this pocket then you do the same thing that you did here on the other side you can see now after i pinned it it relaxes well even if it doesn't shake it a little bit and give it a good press and it will relax as long as you get it right if you do not get it right that is when it will not relax and you need it to relax because you need it to look good you do the same thing that you did on that side for the other side and then you go ahead to sew you can see i'm done sewing see the front now here is the back part you can see the back look up close see where i stitched it i didn't stitch on my jacket i stitched the ear to the other ear you can see now the next thing you have to do is to press it down make sure you iron properly at this point iron when you're making anything jacket shirt in fact anything you're sewing at all try to always iron if you skip ironing probably because of how nigeria is nepa and all for other ones don't skip for jackets suits for shirts all of those things don't skip it now um you can see we are all done for this if this was at the proper place where it's supposed to be trust me this jacket would have been flawless but still it was still good the result was still good mm -hmm. i give myself credit for that and that is me for you i'll tell you my mistakes and my passes we don't just come here and do like we are machines and we are all good no we are not perfect no one is perfect we are not good so i come here and i tell you my mistakes and i tell you my uh, wins and that is it now i'm placing the other pocket the same way you did the first pocket is the same way you do the second pocket at this junction guys please subscribe to my channel turn on your post notification bell if you've not turned it on share my videos guys you don't know who might need it my videos are fully explained share my videos give it a thumbs up if you like it let's get back to our tutorial now i finished with the second um pocket and then you can see they're both done even though the first one was wrong i keep seeing it because seeing it right now is annoying me but we move now guys um you know the neck part or that overlap let me not call it the neck yeah from the neck to the overlap we have a black trimming that is what we're about to do now now the same way you did for the pocket open 
your bias into um, fully to be one and then fold it into two. I don't know how to explain it better than that. After doing that, you place your bias on your fabric. The way you place it, the folded edge will be facing downwards. While, you know, after folding into two, you have two raw edges. That two raw edges is where we'll be facing up. I come again. You pin it down. How do you pin it down? The folded edge of your bias, the folded edge will be facing down or facing you. You can see it. That's the folded edge where I'm pointing at. While the other part with the raw edge is facing up. You do the same for the other side. Now, if you're not using a lining like I'll be using here, you need to have a facing. That's just the truth. You need to have a facing if you're doing this design. So guys, because I'm using a lining, after pinning it down like this, I'm going to take my lining and just sew the way you would sew to clean up any edge. That's just it. You can see how simple it is. I know some people will be wondering how it's done, but this is it. Very simple. I told you that these things, you just need to know the techniques of on how they are done and then it will be a piece of cake for you. Now, you can see, I just put my lining and I'm going to sew it down. I, I used 0 0.25 inches to sew because my bias is not up to 1 inch. That would use 0 0.5. You understand me? But if you're using a bigger fabric, why not? Now, moment of truth. Let's see if it works. If it actually worked. And it worked, guys. Drum roll. Brrr, boom. It worked. You can see how neat it is. It is looking nice. It's already looking like what we have on the thumbnail. The front is neat. The back is neat. That is the inside and the outside of the dress or the jacket is neat. Now, the way I lined this my jacket, I have a detailed tutorial on how to line um, a jacket. I will link it in the description box below. Now, let's go to the sleeve. I just divided that sleeve we cut earlier into two. The lower part is not... I didn't do it um, into two equal halves. Depends on how you want it, whatever design you want. And if you don't want this design, you don't have to divide your sleeve. Just go ahead and sew it like that and add it to your jacket. Well, because I wanted that design, it just makes it look chic and not just white all round. That is why I did that. Now, if you're going for this design, divide your sleeve, making sure the cuff part is just a little bit... Um, big i don't know how to explain it but it cannot be the same size with the upper part you know that i know you, you guys are good students so you know that then you pin your bias the same way you pinned for the bodies you pin your bias down like that the same method applies the folded edge is facing upwards while the um, raw edge is facing towards the raw edge of the fabric and then you go ahead and sandwich it in between the two sleeves that's just it you can see it's all done hmm. and we have the same design on the sleeve the only thing you have to do right now is go ahead and top stitch and then give it a good press then you fold your sleeve and sew your sleeve if you don't know how to make a sleeve check my description box now we're going to the collar part we're almost done guys trust me on that for the collar you measure round the collar part you measure it round the collar area and I got 20 inches for mine. Whatever you get for yours, it's okay. Get a piece of paper or get your um, gum stay or your collar stay for this. So now I measure 10 inches because uh, uh, this is a pattern. You don't need to measure it full. You understand? So I measure 10 inches from the edge of the pattern. Because my 20 inches divided by 2 is 10. Whatever you get, divided by 2 and then you measure. Then you go down by 1 inch. You go down by 1 inch. Don't mind my paper. I don't know what was wrong with it. But it's good now. You go down by 1 inch and then connect with a straight line from that 1 inch. In, in sort of like an angle. Because you don't want it to be straight. If not, your collar will be standing up. This is a bishop collar. You don't want it to be standing inappropriately. You understand me? Then whatever length you want for your 
um, color this is where you take it now I wanted one and a half inches for mine and that is why I'm measuring one and a half inches if you want two inches go ahead but I think one and a half is just the perfect bishop color you see out there even some people go as low as one inch 1.25 inches so one and a half is fair and then I went ahead to curve the curve does not have any measurement just curve and make sure where you're curving you're curving towards the upper part because the down part you do not want to alter that measurement the upper part no problem but the down part you don't want to measure uh, alter that measurement because you'll be joining it to the fabric which is already 20 inches you don't want to join 18 to 20 it cannot it's you're not a magician it, it can't fit happen you know anyways i'm just trimming my um color to have it properly um to have it straight and then i'll go ahead and cut it on my gum stay normally i'd um i would have cut it directly on my gum stay but i didn't want to use a marker on the gum stay because i'm working on a white fabric it might end up showing at the end of the day so it's best to use the pattern paper first if you're working with a white fabric now go ahead and cut exactly what you have on your gum stay but you're cutting it on fold so when you open it you have a continuous color now i went ahead to cut it on my fabric and i added um 0.25 inch on the upper part and 0.5 on the lower part you'll see why i added 0.25 on the upper part because i will not be sewing up to 0.5 because i'll be putting that bias there too to have that same design now before we get to the bias part you iron down your stay on your fabric you iron on one side you remember your collar will have um two pieces you have two pieces for your collar you iron your gum stay on one side or your collar stay on one side outside the country they call it fusible interfacing you iron it on one side yeah i'm just ironing the second part of the collar so it will be straight and um, give me the right result that i want now because i'll be doing that same um design that i we've been doing since on the collar because i want to pipe it as well you go ahead and get your bias fold it into two and then you put it along that curved line you can see that along the curved line follow the curve all the way to the other side and pin it down please pin it down don't work without pinning when you're doing something like this you need it to be accurate as much as possible we're not humans we cannot be perfect but with your pins you at least achieve perfection to an extent so you just pin it down all the way to the other side and then you sandwich it in between the two colors and you um you sew it up it's just the same way we did the shirt the same way we did the sleeve simple and easy like i said earlier don't try to understand these things just practice it okay i love you all guys hmm You can see the results. You can see it on both sides. It looks good because it is already sandwiched inside the inside the sleeve. And it looks really, really good, if I can say that myself. So the next thing you do is just give it a good press. Let it lay down. Don't mind me. At this point, I was sleepy. But guys, I had to do this for you. Even this voice note, I'm doing it by 5 a.m. So... Show me some love, guys. Show me some love. Here, I'm marking the midpoint of the jacket, which is the midpoint on the back part of the jacket. And then you do the same for the collar piece. You mark the midpoint of the collar because you're going to be matching midpoint to midpoint on both pieces. Okay? It's a basic and a standard rule for anything that you'll be matching up like this, I think. Yeah, I know. So the first thing you start from the center and pin up the center and then you work your way both sides. Here, I'll be pinning up one side for you. You can see I'm pinning both um, collars, the two pieces of the collars together. You're wondering why. This, it's because of the way I'm going to um, finish up this jacket. Like I said earlier, 
if you want to see a detailed tutorial on how to make a jacket, how to line a jacket, I have a video on my channel about jacket making. So I'm going to link that um, tutorial for you in the description box and somewhere on the screen so you can see how I did that. Um, after you've watched that video, you'd understand this lining method. I'm not going, I'm not even going into the lining of this particular jacket, but I'll be showing you how you do it if you're not lining your jacket. I hope that was correct. Now I just pinned up um to the other side of um to one side of the jacket the collar i pinned the two pieces to one side of the jacket like i said because of how i will be finishing it now to the other side i'm going to pin just one side that is the side that has the gum stay that is where i will be pinning to the jacket now after pinning that one side to the jacket you go ahead to so remember if you're not lining your pinning all the way around i just did half part because i wanted to show you guys so you know everything like i said in my um description is a detailed tutorial so after pinning um all the way around one side of your collar you go ahead and sew iron it the same allowance you iron it facing up you push it up and then the other part of the collar you use it to cover it that is you fold it down and then sew on it i hope that was clear but for mine i'm not doing that you can see what i'm doing i just showed you how i finished it so that you would understand um but the full lining um, video like i said earlier is in my jacket tutorial class plus the sleeve everything how you would finish it like a normal suit you go to the market to buy i have that tutorial on my channel trust me it's worth it now i went ahead to turn my lining and then um, I'm going to use that lining to finish up the raw edges. Okay, should I say the last ring? I'm gonna I'm gonna ring for subscribing to my channel, guys. Please subscribe to this channel. Let us get to two K subscribers. Okay, subscribe to the channel. Turn on your post notification bell if you've not done so, so that you get notified whenever I post any new video. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to share to your friends. You don't know who you will be saving. Or will you be helping be a, your brother's keeper in this 2023? Now, after sewing my collar, I went ahead to do my normal lining. Like I said, I have a video for it for the lining. You can see how the inside is. If you want to know how I did this lining, go and check out that video. You can see how it is. The sleeve looking the um the body is looking fine. Thank you guys for always supporting. I see your comments. I reply to them. I get so happy for your love. I'm really, really grateful. I don't know what I've done to deserve this love, but I want to say thank you very much. I love you guys. See you in my next video, which will be coming up very, very soon. Thanks for staying with me. Mwah.